Hi guys, welcome back to the farm in Thailand with Suni Lee. Uh, don't worry, it's not a bondage special. Uh, that's on Tuesdays. Uh, I've been bushwhacking, or is it weed whacking, strimming, and I've uh, been working on the pasture, um, trying to develop it as best as I can for the goats. So I uh, just want to show you what I've been getting up to and uh, why I've been doing it. Let's get all this sweaty stuff off. I've done about an hour so far. Uh, I've got about a quarter of a tank of petrol left, but it's so hot. Still early morning, but it's in full sun. So the question you may be asking yourself is, why is he strimming a load of pasture when he's got a load of goats? Well, although we've got 96 hooves um, in the herd at the moment, which sounds a lot, it's only 24, and three of them are a super nib. They're very, very small. They've only, two of them have only just started eating grass. Although they're doing a great job, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's it's minuscule, but it's it, it's nowhere near what we need to get on top and to to improve and develop the the pasture here. So what we've got is um, I don't know a rough guess, probably 15, 20 different grasses here. It's it's crazy. The goats generally eat all of them, but of course they do have their favourites, and some of the grasses grow very very tall and they suppress all the other weeds. So if they're not keen on those, they've, they've got to come down, otherwise they'll go to seed and they'll, they'll take over. And the main one that I'm up against is this. It's, it's almost like a, a bamboo. Well, bamboo is grass, I know anyway, but it is bloody hard as nails. And the strimmer, well, I've had to put a, an extra robust knife on there to, to get through it. So that, that's coming down, of course, that's, it's, it's good organic matter. Well, it will become once the carbon starts to break down and the, the hooves on the goats start to push it in there. Of course, we need a little bit more rain for the ground to soften up a little bit more. We had about a week of good rain. Uh, and it was lovely and soft out here. We had very, very little standing water. Everywhere else had standing water, but ours went straight into the soil. And it was great. You could see where the, the goats were walking. Now it's, it's, it's gone hard again. But bear in mind, this is we're not even a year into um, developing this pasture. We started in the middle of the bloody dry season. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it's going to take quite a while. But the progress, the rate of progress has been phenomenal, in, in my opinion. Let's show you a few bits and bobs. Let me get my sweaty app back on and uh, I'll give you a closer look. What I've been doing is, is about a tank of petrol a day. Uh, just strim him as much as I can. I don't know whether the camera is picking up the sensor scale very well, but that's got to be getting on for 12 foot high. And this is what I was going through with the scythe, but it even blunts your scythe quite easily. There's no getting through that any other way than with a big, big old knife on your weed whacker. So that's gradually coming down and you can see that the, the goats will not go in there. If they have a little bit of climbing weed that they'll spot, they'll stick their head in there and grab that. But generally speaking, they won't go anywhere near that. They'll just skirt around the outside. So that is coming down. Once you cut it down, it does sprout up. So this is what I did before the rainy season. And you can see it's green all the way down there. Now this is the crazy thing with goats. If we cut this, and you don't even have to shred it, uh, and we put this in the goat house, they'll eat that. But out here, they've got so many other grasses that they prefer, they won't touch this. Unless, let me get a bit here, unless it's like this, really young and succulent, then uh, they'll have a nosh on that as they're walking past. However, they won't stay in one place and browse on this uh, and give it a good going over. It's a mouthful as they're walking through to their favourite stuff. The other thing was that this grass was creating an impenetrable barrier for this sort of stuff. Now normally you'd be you'd be hating this this wiry old I don't know what you call it a shrub. Um, you wouldn't want these on your farm at all. But the goats love them and they're really they're really good for them. And now someone like Bullseye will be noshing that off from about there. It's very important that the goats get some brown stuff, so this stuff is brilliant for them. Well, the real progress can be seen out here. Basically, you couldn't walk through here. The worst bit 
which some people said, oh, you just want to burn it off, mate, and then all the grass will come. Uh, that is true. Grass does like a good old burn, but check out what's happened by not burning. So you couldn't see any grass here. It was, well, it's basically non-existent, but of course the seed was there. So they call it the seed bank. It was just waiting to be given a chance. So you imagine all this was covered with this stuff about three or four foot high and nothing else was there. Again, the goats wouldn't go through it, mainly because there was no fodder for them in there. So what I did, I, I just trampled a few little walkways through, uh, then the goats would follow. And then every time I came out, I just walked on a little bit more and more. Once it's laid down at that sort of angle, then the grass has started to come through slowly. Uh, and then the ball was rolling, the, the goats went in there and they were trampling it down more. Now this is what we're really looking for. It's like a half live, half dead mulch. And coming through is this grass. And this is one of their all time favorites. I don't know the name, you'll have to forgive me guys. But they will, they will browse on this for hours and hours. They don't get sick of that. And they'll have a mouthful of this now and again. But the joy is underneath it. Look, you can't see the soil. And that's what we want. We'll just show you next door. And I'm not dissing them, it's because it's do they, they do an annual an annual crop. And so often the case with modern agriculture, you you expose the soil. There you go, we had a lot of rain. We had standing water here. And you can see it's just it's just revealed all the stones. So they'll have to plough that again. The herd was struggling to get onto this little mountain here. I know it's not a mountain, but that's what me and Toon call them. So the big fella, Bullseye and Brownie, they seem to overheat quicker than the others. And they need a little bit of a rest now and again when they're out for a few hours. So they like to get the head down here for a few minutes. And again, the others all start browsing on the, uh, the old thickets and that sort of thing in there. But just let me show you the extent of what we're up against. Now in the future, so we are, most of you all know we are aiming for well over a hundred strong in the herd. We will keep on adding and adding and expanding the herd until the land can't sustain them. We've got 24 at the moment and the, so the, they're hardly touching it. But the main reason is we just haven't got enough. And then when this tall grass comes in, that's it, it's, uh, it's locked off for them. You see there's some old sugar cane sticks that are left here. Some of the, quite a few of those are still alive. Uh, but what happens, you get like a little mound forming around them as the leaves and other bits and bobs start falling off. So I, I needed to get the weed whacker in there and start ripping it all out and balancing it off a bit. Uh, and then you won't get these termite mounds creating quite so much. Now before, I cleared all this with the scythe. Look at it now. And this is my nemesis. Uh, it, it's just... Well, most of you that have been following our channel know what we're up against with the soil on our land. Our main thing is for the land, to improve the land, is to get it covered up. And the good thing is we're streaming this. I know it is a hard job, but little bit by little bit, well, I've only been doing it four days now, the amount of organic matter, this is, just, this is just getting chopped off the bottom and laid right down, that will all get returned to the soil. You can see it's improving already, the amount of mushrooms, I'm sure you've seen the uh, elephant mushroom uh, monster harvest that we had. Uh, we've had another one since then, um, probably only about 5 kg. Uh, but there's been lots of fungi growing here. Most of it's been poisonous, but I dare say it's still a good sign that the, li the, the life is returning back to the soil. There's lots of spider webs in the morning as well with the dew on them. So it looks like the wildlife is returning, that the, um, oh Lee, come on now. The dragonflies have come back. They have taken a real hit over the years with all the spraying that's been going on and the burning. But they've, they've come back in the last, oh, I would say two weeks. A nice bit of welcome shade. Couldn't even see this two days ago. 
Uh, again, now the goats can get in here and they can have a good feed on the uh, the thick stuff in there. Not thick stuff, but the uh, the wiry stuff. One of my biggest regrets when we first came here, we should have just ploughed everywhere, balanced it, and put cover crop in, and just kept on doing that for a year or two, just let the land repair itself. Instead of that, we burnt, we sprayed, we ploughed. And it's just, well, didn't know any better. Learning from ground up. And, you know, it is the common way to, to farm around this neck of the woods. But once you start doing your research, yeah, I know I should have researched it earlier, guys, but hey ho. We live and learn, don't we? We live and learn. We're learning so much now. Uh, this is a good one for them. It's sort of like a little climbing, climbing weed. They love that. So they probably spend about 20 minutes in this area here. There's loads of that here. There's a lot of goat deaths in Thailand at the moment. I don't know whether some of you guys that are farming goats yourself, or certainly if you're thinking about getting into it, flu-like symptoms, not eating, uh, pus coming from the mouths, the gums. So just be careful. So if you can get your animals out, uh, just try and keep them dry as well, and you won't go far wrong. Just through here, I'm going to show you. This is Booby Island. Two huge mounds. Two came up with the idea. It's not me being sexist. So, uh, but again, you can't you can't get in there. You can't see it. Now this is a place that regularly gives. I don't know the correct word, but Toon calls them mud mushrooms. And they're very expensive in Thailand. Uh, there's normally a couple of good flushes in there. So I need to whack all that because it's so you can see it is a real big. It is a hard job. But a tank of petrol, a tank of fuel a day, and uh, we soon get there. One of my biggest frustrations when I first started farming here, so what was that? Well, on and off, uh, three years ago, because we started before we, we built the farmhouse here, um, was not being able to, to get a job done. So before, this would be sending me absolutely crazy. I'd be like, that's got to come out. Uh, and that bit over there, that bit over there, that bit, and, and I want to get all that done today. And everything else can wait. And you end up bloody breaking your body. Uh, and then you can't go again the next day. And you probably don't get as far as you hoped for anyway. I mean, I've had all this cleared once before. And the goats did like it to start with because it opened up new, new growth. Anything that generates new growth, generally, they have a good feed on it. But... Again, they, they move on, they keep moving on, so they never decimate an area. The other main success, well, I would say this is the biggest success out of all of it, is this grass here. I just want to show you the, the difference. This is where we've been getting a lot, a lot of toadstools and poisonous mushrooms around here. Well, I'll have to look into it. I'm not sure the difference between the two, but the bloody poisonous, they've got a ring around the the main stalk. Okay, so this grass here, in the dry season, it was still, it was still green, but that wow. was all that they were getting. Now, look at this. So they, they'd only eat from there. Good thing is they'd have a little bit of brown stuff. Here now, look. Don't cut your hand, Lee. They'll eat the whole lot of that. And you can see the blades so much bigger length and width and they'll, they'll, they'll just grab that and they'll, they'll just consume the whole lot if they ever pick a piece of grass out not generally not this one because the roots are really set solid in the soil now um yeah if they pick one out and there's some root on there and they'll lay it all the way down to about the last couple of inches and then they'll just drop it so there's another bonus they are naturally chopping and dropping of course they're fertilizing on the way Here's another grass here. Jessie absolutely loves this fine bladed grass. She, she'll have all this. She won't. She's one of the few that won't move on until she's finished her favourites. If I had the time, which I obviously don't, I would trim this down. I'd trim this down to about about here and get rid of it so that would just drop onto the floor and rot down. Um, and then you get all the new growth. Instead of just getting on the old sticks, a little bit of growth on the end, although they're not a bad size. 
you, you would get so much more growth coming up from ground level. The whole thing will be green and edible for them. But I just can't. I really, really can't. Here's another different grass. This particular one's just started to go to seed. Um, you'll see some of the goats, not all of them, but some of them will come and have a feed on here. And a few of them like to pull this out. Where we've been getting so many of our mushrooms from, just look at the, the quality of that grass there. That's crazy. That's just touching over one meat at all. And they can eat the whole thing. They eat like a giant piece of spaghetti. But while they're eating that, they walk into the next bit. But again, you know, how much food is there? That could feed, I don't know, 10 meters that way, 10 meters that way, that could feed 24 goats um, all day. But they won't stay here. So the way we're managing the land other than strewing is, the goats are coming out here twice a day, normally for two hours at a time. And then sometime during the day, do one hour strimming, one and a half hours maybe, depends how many breaks I have. Other than that, it's as I'm walking along behind the herd, I'm just trampling on stuff or pruning stuff or hacking stuff with the scythe. But I say this, this grass is too, it's too thick and too strong for me to get through it with a, with a scythe now. I know in the past um, a few people have been concerned that we've, we have in effect been creating a huge potential tinderbox here with so much uh, dry matter on the ground during the dry season and yeah there is an increased risk but the fire wouldn't be started by us. Um, we're always here. If we're not here, then someone else is looking after the place. If there's a fire from someone burning off sugar cane or something like that, you're immediately looking out. If this if this farm was to burn, then the people you know that, that started the fire and lost control of it would be liable. So yeah, there was an increased risk, um, certainly in the dry season. At the moment, yeah, there still is. But remember, this is still early days. And now you can, you can already see that the, the land is holding more water than everywhere else. You're getting runoff everywhere else. Not one drop of water has, has left our land. Um, in effect, I've, I've dug um, little drainage points on uh, three sides on access roads. So wherever I've seen um, like a, a, a water pooling area, um, I've diverted that straight onto our farm. It's like a sponge. Um, and that year upon year, this is just going to get steadily improved, not, not necessarily by me, but by the herd. Um, certainly as the numbers increase, it's, it's going to accelerate. Slow start, picking up velocity now. It's all good. I love it. Just coming out here, all I enjoy working with Toon, this is a bit too much for her at the moment. Um, I quite like just sitting down here and, and getting my man bag out with my uh, electrolytes and then uh, just looking. And everywhere I'm looking, I don't find it daunting now, like, I've got to get that bit cut. I want to get that finished today. No, I would like it done today, but I'm not beating myself up about it now. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it more, which I didn't think was possible. Just uh, so proud of the goats. We're so lucky that we stumbled across them. <laughs> we're only supposed to have three for pets. And now we've gone all in. It's all in on goats. <clears throat> uh, next few days, I think we're actually going to go and look for more. Some more pregnant girls, hopefully. If we can find some healthy ones. Don't want any with pus in the mouth. What's all that about? I know some of you have been missing her. There you go, guys. Just for you. My Japanese love child, Honda. She's still going well. Just minor bits and bobs now and again, but you give her a regular oil change and grease her up, and uh, she's good to go every time. Never lets me down, that girl. All I can hear is someone shouting. That must be about a mile away. I can hear a chainsaw going probably two miles away. I can hear bullseye chasing the girls back at the house now and again. And I can sometimes hear our two builders banging away. That's it guys, I've got to get my gimp outfit back on. 
I'm going to finish my tank of petrol um, and then I'm going to make my way back. Who would have believed working so hard can be so enjoyable? If you're thinking about doing it guys, don't leave it too late. I do struggle quite a few days of the week and uh, if you want to have a go at this sort of thing, make sure you've still got plenty of years um, in, in, the, in the locker because you're going to need a lot of energy to work in this sort of heat doing these physical jobs. It's just not the same when you get people to do all this work. You, you, yeah, you can sit back and watch them sweat and do the hard graft and you can enjoy what they achieve, but doing it yourself is totally different, totally different. I recommend it to anyone. Get closer to nature and brilliant. Feeling quite content today. All right, let's get on. Electrolytes and then get on. Yeah, yeah. Ciao, ciao, ciao.